now let's, uh, let's go over the action course for developing your own service. And uh, I also want to go over some principles about what it means to take a small service business and scale it up to a larger service business, which is very difficult. And um, from what I understand and what experience I have, it might be wise to think of growing your service business in terms of independent autonomous teams, like going from your singular independent autonomous team to doubling it into an additional separate autonomous team. However, uh, some questions and principles to consider before we get into the steps, which is uh, defining your core customer. So define your core customer and understand who it is who is requiring your services. And then defining the core problem solved. So we already know this about having a service business, but this is just a review. Uh, don't try to be too much to everyone. Um, a lot of bigger companies try to do this, and uh, it's a huge drain of cash because you need all sorts of infrastructure in order to expand the service you provide. Um, and uh, you don't necessarily need to package your service so everyone will be happy, just your core customer. But then you want to you wanna package your service like a product so when people pay for it, they can just click add to cart, sell in one sense or another, and then they know they're going to be receiving a core predetermined type of service. Um, and they know exactly the parameters of that service. Um, so if you want to get bigger, you need to determine why you want to get bigger. Um, don't lose sight of why you want this. Um, maybe you shouldn't. I, of course, maybe you want more money. But growing one team big enough to handle a, for instance, nationwide service uh, offering is not as good as, uh, I don't know, staying small, staying true to your customers. So like I said, maybe uh, developing a secondary team who can provide the same level of service that your current team does is a good way. And for those in your organization or those in your team who are very ambitious, and want the opportunity to grow, maybe they could become the autonomous leader of their own single team, or maybe they could become a, a manager who deals with individual team leaders. But this idea that economy of scales comes from providing a service to a large number of people with a single team, um, it's just more difficult to accomplish than you might realize because you lose that special touch. And um, you, it just can be confusing because you're providing a service. Um, align your strategy with your vision. Uh, are you selling out by getting bigger? It's the same question as if you're losing touch with your customer. Are, are you keeping it real? Is, is the inspiration that drove you to create this service uh, compromised by this uh, necessary one-size-fits-all approach? Uh, probably not. Uh, look at the numbers to analyze market demand. Um, maybe people in one state don't want the same thing as people in your current state. Maybe people in another country don't require the same type of service or aren't interested in the same type of customer experience as the people in your own country. You understand your culture, but do you really understand others? One thing I've heard about this is uh, when Walmart, uh, the retail giant who focuses on being a cost leader, tried to move into Germany. They had this, uh, they have values, you know, which is smile at your customers when they come in the door. And uh, it turns out Germans really don't like this. They uh, looked at the customer service people like they were crazy, like, it's like, why are you smiling at me? German culture is much more interested in competence than uh, kindness or, or uh, warmth from their uh, service providers. So, uh, you know, specifically the challenges of scaling is packaging and systematizing. So when you have smaller teams, it's easier to systematically approach the smaller number of customers you have. But packaging a larger service for a nationwide uh, audience 
is, is more difficult and it's more difficult to manage. Uh, losing sight of your customer service, this is the biggest thing. Uh, if you're providing a service, your customer service is half the battle. And um, if you don't remember their name, if you don't remember what their issue is, you know, you're relying on a service ticket or else just a, a brand new evaluation of your customers uh, every time they call in, they're more likely, if they prefer a human touch, they're more likely to go with a smaller company uh, who can tailor uh, their service experience. Um, so there's a challenge in delegating success and a necessity. Um, delegating means having another team. It means having a manager who has uh, full authority over that team and then managing their results uh, from a distance. Um, I truly believe it's the only way. And then you know you want to create a holistic scale-up plan. So if you want your departments to get bigger, yeah, prepare a plan for it by the department. Um, not just sort of a, a, a one-size-fits-all general company growth strategy uh, because like I said, you're going to lose that human touch. Defining rules against scope creep and over-serving customers. This is a big problem for service companies that's wanting to provide too much. Um, so defining the parameters of the service that you can give and becoming better at that service, uh, growing by providing that niche service, not growing by increasing the number of services you provide. There might be a time when it's obvious that providing a, a, a secondary service next to the service you provide is a good idea. <clears throat> but it's, uh, it's a recipe for disaster if you just go crazy saying, yeah, we can do this. Oh, yeah, we can do this too. Oh, yeah, we can do this too. And uh, the number of people you need might surprise you. Um, create automated processes for repetitive tasks. In the beginning, you're not going to know what those automated processes should be. And on a certain level, creating automated processes can be expensive. Um, you know, creating an application that serves your, your company in some way, specifically just for you, uh, your proprietary software internally. Uh, it costs money. It costs far too much money for a 10-person company to afford. But once you're 1,000 people, you can automate some processes. You can have an intercompany user phase that will save you a lot of time and uh, slow down your need to hire more people. Um, you know, manage your mobile fleet. If people are going to people's houses, uh, if they're uh, business to business and you have to do direct office calls, uh, cutting costs and simplifying early to avoid problems later is the name of the game. It's the name of the game in almost every way you can think about it. You know, if you can look out in the future and see what's coming and, you know, focus on keeping your costs low, focus on being light, then uh, you'll be able to stretch your resources a lot further and it won't become so heavy when you try to scale up and up and up. Uh, create a published price list. Uh, this goes back to uh, selling your service like a product. You know, here's a menu, here's the services we provide on the menu, uh, this is how much it costs, bang, clear. And, you know, this will protect you from uh, over-serving as well because the parameters of the service you're providing are very uh, clearly laid out. And when it's on a menu, it's clearly laid out for the customer and also clearly laid out for your own employees and your own management. Um, drop hourly rates. If you want to get bigger, charging by the hour, unless you, like I said, have a small autonomous teams, charging by the hour could be uh, extremely difficult. It's difficult to prove. It's open for dispute. Uh, it's a lot of legwork to go through and follow up. Um, so packaging your prices is uh, clearly the way to get your service business bigger. Uh, a fee system, establishing fees for various types of tasks. So it's, you know, you have a price and maybe uh, uh, there needs to be some fees paid for the individuals that participate in it because they're specialized. And uh, in a way, it allows you to keep costs down. 
It keeps your uh, menu prices down by also establishing specific fees for specific types of professionals that you employ. Uh, productize your service with package offerings. In other words, yeah, you can get these three services together and it's actually cheaper than buying each service off the menu individually. And this goes for having sales too. You know, you get this bundle of services if you uh, pay for it all at one time. You know, leverage assets owned by others. So if you can use somebody else's truck fleet or if you can uh, use somebody else's infrastructure or mainframe or hosting, uh, this is just a great way to uh, take some of the burden off the shoulders of your company. Not because it's cheaper necessarily. It might actually be a little bit more expensive, but it lowers the management experience. It, takes, it softens the burden because you're trying to scale up. Um, understand the local laws in your target area. Scaling up could uh, step on somebody's toes somewhere else. And uh, people are always looking to protect their localized rights. Uh, develop a content strategy, a uh, marketing strategy. So, you know, there it goes to having a community. Uh, your community allows you, in an interesting way, to be honest with your customers about what's happening. Even the struggling of scaling, you know, we're trying to get bigger. Boy, we're having a hard time with this. Ha, ha, ha. Um, focus on hiring the right people to represent your brand as you grow. Uh, your marketing team can be uh, centralized to your headquarters. Uh, marketing is something you can scale very easily, actually. Um, service providing, not. Um, so you want to have a, a proper branding team who uh, who focuses on uh, softening uh, the uh, customer uh, stress points, the pain the customer receives when you get too big to look at them as an individual. Like I said, sticking to autonomous teams is a way to prevent that from happening. Um, look at the numbers to analyze market demand. You know, know your numbers, that's obvious. Uh, narrow in on a niche, but that comes down to uh, clearly qualifying the, uh, the scope of the services you provide. Um, prioritize trust, transparency, and listening to customers. So no matter how big you get, uh, and suppose there's a reason why you can't have small autonomous teams, like you really do want to have some economies of scale. If you remember the thing that you're, that's at risk is the trust and the transparency and the, the communication with customers, maybe in your instance, there's a way you can mitigate that somehow, uh, especially trained customer service reps. Um, uh, advanced uh, customer tickets, so when they call back again, uh, there's a lot of information readily available to the representative to, to handle them. Oh yes, welcome back, I see last time you had this experience. You talked about these things, you purchased these goods, um, all of this available at the fingertips. And this is, goes to automation. Um, and at the beginning, when you're small, this isn't such an easy thing to develop, but as you get bigger, it's, uh, it's cost saving. And then uh, build a brand worth promoting. So, I mean, why scale up if you're not experiencing high quality customer reception already? Maybe they take your service because it's the only thing available that really does the thing. But if, uh, if your branding isn't where it needs to be, maybe you should reconsider of scaling up in the first place. So having branding in conjunction with scaling up is, uh, I would say, a must or maybe uh, an obvious path.